Okay. How how are we all getting on? How's how's the how's the tiredness levels there? Because you been, what what time did you get up this morning? Four thirty in the morning. <laughs> five five five. Uh, you went five in the morning. <laughs> time you guys up. Five thirty six. Early start. Feeling tired? Yeah, a bit. A bit tired. So let's just we'll have some fun today, right? So. What, what, what stuff have you been doing so far this morning? Have you been, what, what workshops have you been into? Let's hear about what you've been doing. It's Halloween. Halloween, so look at stereotypes and costumes. Mm -hmm. And we'll touch on that a little bit in this session. What else? Types of, types of abuse. Yeah? Problem solving. Problem solving. Team building. What have you, you been up to? The, uh, the, sports, the, the sportsmanship one as well. Okay. Well, this, this next 45 minutes is going to look at an issue which I know is, is impacting on you in the United States, is, is impacting on young people in, in Scotland. Um, the issue of sexting. If I was to ask you to describe sexting in a couple of words, how would you describe it? What, what is sexting? <laughs> what is sexting? Obviously using technology. Using technology, okay. To do what? Synphos. Talk dirty, send photos, dirty pictures, unacceptable pictures, inappropriate pictures, indecent pictures. Yeah? Is it, is it an issue you see in your schools? Yes. It's an issue. Hands up if you have, 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 have mentored before this year. Any, any, any have you, have you, is this your second year as a mentor? Mm -hmm. Okay, so your second year as a mentor. But everybody else, your second year, most of the people are, are new to it. Who's, who's new to mentoring? Fantastic. Well done, yeah, it's, it's good. So the, the, plan, the plan for the next, this session is to, is to really talk about the issue of social media, talk about some of the issues that we're facing in society, but I'm gonna do it within the context of an MVP scenario. So some of you might, have, might see some similarities as to what you've done before. You might learn something new around how I deliver this, the, the scenarios, but this is how we deliver MVP back, at, back in Scotland. And as I said this morning, you, you, you're very quickly gonna be doing some wonderful things in your schools. You, you, you can make young people feel safe. And just imagine if, if, you feel, feel, if, you're, if you feel safe in your world, in your school world, you can do anything you want to do. Magic happens when you feel safe and secure. Okay, so today you're, you're, you're a, a class of bystanders. So you're not, I'm not gonna speak to you as victims or perpetrators. You're all friends, teammates, classmates, whatever you want to call it, you're bystanders today. You okay with that? Okay, good. So. First things first, before I do any, any of my sessions, it's probably the same for you as well, is we start off with some rules in the room, ground rules. Why, why would it be important for me when I'm talking about sexting or abuse to start off setting rules for the classroom? Why would it be important? What's the purpose of rules? Yeah, go for it. To make people feel comfortable So make people feel safe, feel comfortable. Yeah, good, good point. What else? What's the, what else is, are we achieving by creating some rules in the classroom? We're creating res res mutual respect, yeah? Okay. What's the, what's the sad reality when you go into a class to speak about bullying behaviour, sexting, domestic violence, sexual assault? What's the sad reality for the people in the room? And I've got to be mindful today of people in the room here as well, but what's the sad reality? What do you think? What's your thoughts? Say it. Go for it. They're on their phones. Do you think there could be people in the room who've been affected by these behaviours? Yeah, something you will find in your when you do what, in the classes that you will start to see people. It'll, it'll be the quiet ones. It'll be the people who don't involve in the class. It'll be the ones that have a, bit, a wee tear in their eye. You will have people in your classes who have been bullying victims, who will have been sexual assault victims, who will be domestic violence victims, dating violence victims, sexting victims. That's the sad reality of the society we live in. Not just in Scotland, not just here in the United States, but across the world. The issues that we talk about in MVP are impacting on young people, I would say from 10, 11, 12 upwards. So what you're doing by this, is you, by this creating the discussion is you protect, you're, you're, you're really starting to make them feel a bit safer, but they need to go on a journey. And that, that journey might be to tell somebody about it. They might, and they might speak to you. They might disclose to you. So something I would suggest when you go back to your schools is you'll have a, you'll have a session around disclosures. What to do if someone says something to you? How do you deal with that? Okay, so that's so important. So 
What sort of rules do you think we should be setting in the class today? You talked about respect. So what do you mean by what do you mean by respect? What do you mean by that? By rules, so like, no, but by by showing respect, what do you mean by that? Right. Okay. So showing respect is it okay to disagree with a person? Mm -hmm. That's fine. We're, we're happy with that. Are we all going to have the same viewpoints? Well, the world the world would be pretty boring, wouldn't it, if we all thought the same and acted the same? So we are entitled to viewpoints. So we need to respect each other. We don't have to agree with them, but we have to respect that person's viewpoint. What other rules would you like to have in the classroom that's going to make you feel safe? For me, I want you to participate and get involved in the discussion. But what other rules are going to make you feel safe? What are you thinking? If I, if I, if I tell a story or someone, someone tells a story, what, what do we have to do to make sure that what happens with that story? Pay attention. So we listen. That's a good rule. What else? You could like, ask questions about it afterwards so that you're involved with it. Okay, so you show interest in it and you're part of it. Is it important it stays in the room though? Yeah, confidentiality. If somebody starts, says something, you know, let, let's keep it in the room. That's important as well. So let's just, let's just work together as a team today. I mean, you do your sessions with your young people. That's what you're trying to, to bring together, is bring together a group of young people to think together, to think as one. To be, to be a team to deal with the issues that we're going to talk about. So we're going to talk about sexting today. We'll talk about photos from a phone, which is a scenario we use a lot in Scotland, a lot with young people. It's one of, one of our favourite ones because it's a big issue that we're, we're seeing in, in, in Scotland. So can I get a volunteer to read this scenario? Because would somebody be brave enough to go for it, my friend? I thought you would, you would volunteer, but you go for it. Read it out for me. Uh, you're with a group of friends. In the group that still in touch with the ex-girlfriend on his mobile phone. In the photo, she's naked or wearing very little clothing. Some other boys in the group ask if the group asks for the photo. He then sends them to everyone, including you. Okay, so is that, is that realistic? Could that happen in your school? Could that happen? Hands up, you think that could happen? Raise your hands, you think that could happen? Yeah, well, yeah, it could happen. Right, I want you to, for the next 20 seconds, speak to the person next to you or in the threes and identify what's the red flags from that scenario? What's saying to you, mm, something, I'm, I'm not happy with that. What's the red flags, the warning words? Right, 20 seconds, go for it. Okay, 10 more seconds. Okay, fantastic, so let's start. Let's start over here. So red, fla red, red flags, red flags for you. What would the red flag be from that? The boy showing pictures. So the boy showing the pictures, red flag. So it's an ex-girlfriend. That's a red flag to you. So okay, good point. Ex-girlfriend. What else? She's not wearing clothes. So it's a naked picture. Yeah, that might sound so obvious, but it's a red flag to you. Good. He's just like he's super ready to just forward those pictures. So he's just hit the share button. Yeah. And he's, he's hitting it and gone for it and, and shared it. Here, what you anything else? He forwarded it to everyone. So he's, everybody's gone it without what? Thinking about it. Without thinking about it? Okay. Red flags here? No, including him being asked for. So you're, that, that, that's you. Well, you're yeah. a part of it. So, you, you, you're, so that's a red flag to you. You're, you're actually part of, part of this issue now. He's, he's made you part of it by sending it to yourself. Okay, so we've got a few wee red flags here. Can I, can I, can I get you to raise your hands if you think there's a problem with what you're reading up there? Raise your hands really tall and wide. Tall and high. Again, look around the room. Each other. Put your hands down. Why, why am I asking you to put your hands up at certain stages and look around the room? What's the purpose of that? What's the purpose of that? You know that everybody has the same yeah. I hold the viewpoint in my heart that the vast majority of young people in the world have healthy attitudes. The vast majority of people in this room, upstairs, in other classrooms, back in Scotland, know there's a problem with this behaviour. And, and what we need to be doing with MVP is, is reassuring me that you think the same as me, that you think the same as each other. Because if we can start to do that, we can start to deal with this stuff. Because the fear of being different is what stops a young person from stepping up. What would, what would stop people from, from getting involved? I've given you one. The fear of, of being different. What else would stop a person from getting involved in this and doing something about it? What would, what would, what would be a barrier to a bystander from doing something? What would you think? Fear of losing like, the guy's friendship. So fear of losing a friend, okay. 
What else? What would, what would stop you getting involved in this, potentially? So, the fear of getting into trouble. But anything else? It's just wrong and uncomfortable. It's wrong and uncomfortable? And you don't want, you just don't want to get too, too much for me, I don't want to get involved in it? And for, you know, for, for us to get bystanders to intervene, that's what MVP is about, showing courage, we need to understand why they don't intervene. And there's lots of things going on in our heads. You know, I, I use this, this picture here. This, this, when you see something you're not happy with, now bear in mind we've all agreed, and I'll refer to this a few times, we've all agreed there's a problem with that scenario, but that's what our minds do when we see things we're not happy with. So what, what's going through your head just now with that scenario? That's, that's what we're talking about today. So what's, what's coming in your head just now? What sort of things are you thinking about when you read that scenario? What are you thinking? So the picture's there, it's going, to get, it's going to go viral, it's going to get worse. Okay, good point. What else? What else are you thinking? You're now attached to it because you're so close and Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm involved now, as, as you, you said, but I'm, I'm part of it now. I'm, I can't even walk, well, I could walk away from it, but I'm now involved. What else? Any other things you're thinking about? No? Yeah, go for it. The, whoever the girl is, her privacy is being like invaded on large scale without her having any say in it whatsoever. So she didn't take the pictures to allow this to be spread, but her privacy is being impacted upon that. You know, some thoughts for me, uh, you know, I can't believe he has those photographs. Somebody has said that. Why has he got these pictures? Why hasn't he deleted them? I'm not sure how I, I, how I feel about this. I doubt, I doubt she knows he's showing these around. How would she feel if she knew? But she did send them. Can we get into trouble for this? If I say something, will they just laugh at me? No one else seems to have a problem with it. What should I do? Okay, so that, that's the type of thing that we as bystanders often think about. We're scared. You know, is it, is it any of our business to get involved in situations? We, we often say, well, she did send the pictures. Okay, so that's the sort of things we're thinking about. I'm gonna do an activity just now, which I call reply, delete, share. I'm gonna get you to stand up. And I'm going to ask you to watch this microphone on the ground. But I want you to all come in the middle of the room. So stand up, put your books down, just watch the microphone. <coughs> just, just, just stand where you are, right? Okay. What we're going to do is, you'll see on the board we have reply here, we have share over here, and we have delete in the middle. I'm going to put a mobile phone screen, and this is your, this is your phone screen. So you're going to, we're going to see a picture of a phone screen. This is you reading the phone. And it's going to be from a friend of yours who's called Scott. Any Scots in the room? That's good. Just you. I'm not called Scott. No, Scott. Just, just me. Right, okay. So, so I, th I, don't, I, don't, I don't want people thinking that I'm picking on Scots here. I'm not. Scott, it's just, just the word. So Scott has sent you a text message. And I want you to tell me what you would do with that text message. Are you going to reply? Are you going to delete? Or are you going to share? You okay with that? Does that make sense? Right, so here we go. So Scott, dumped her. Check that slag. One pick around whole school. What are you going to do? Are you going to, what was that, delete? Or reply over here? Reply there. Are you going to delete? Sorry, are you going to share? Sorry, share here and delete in the middle. Reply, share, delete. So, are you in the middle? Huh? Right, okay, okay, so that's the point. Are you guys deleting? Yeah. You're thinking deleting the picture, you're replying? Okay, well, let's, what, what are you thinking? Okay, so you're going to tell them this is not right to do it, okay? Good point, what are you thinking, Kelly? Um, I would say that I would be wrong for him to say something like that. think it's important that this person gets to know that this is not on at all? Okay, good point. So you, you we're thinking delete here, so what, what are you thinking, Molly? So it doesn't go around the school. Okay, so it doesn't go any further? Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I honestly think that like, like you do need to talk to Scott, but this is the kind of conversation that you can't really do over text. So okay. I would, I would delete this and then I would go find So you would delete the picture, yeah. but maybe have a one-to-one -one conversation yeah. with Scott you to say... You want to confront him in person. And what, what would you say to Scott? It's just... It's not right to, like, have okay. some privacy like that. It's not okay. Right just that Any other thought? Anything different from anybody else? Have we had, uh, what, what, you're in the middle? What you, what you, what you're there? Same thing. What you're just Same thing from there. I would uh, reply out, say something's not okay, and then delete it because I don't want anybody else 
Okay, okay. So one more, one more text. This is from Zoe, and he's always in the room. Thank God for that. We've done, done well today. Picked the right names. Um, so Zoe is a friend of yours, and she sent you this text message. OMG, look at this slut. What are you going to do? Are you going to reply? Are you going to share? Are you going to delete? This is the second text you've had on the same subject. What are you going to do? I'm going to come around here so we can face the camera. I've oh, got a bite for the camera. Right, face me. <laughs> right, so can, are, we, are, we, are you in the same place? Are you just deleting it? Yeah. Are you, have you changed at all? Anybody changed their stance? No? So what's your thoughts? Caitlin? Yep. What are you thinking? I would just delete it and ignore it. I mean, okay. I guess you could talk to her about it in person, but it's bad to do it over text. I okay. Guess. Any other thought are you thinking? Just delete it. Just delete it? It's the kind of thing that you don't really want to dignify with a response. Right, so, you, so again, you might, but you said before, maybe a face to face yeah. might be required rather than just a, a te text message and go get out of get in hand. This case, in this case, she's like, she's probably saying it just to like get any response. So you just okay. kind of want what, to just. What, why, why would Zoe, do you think, send this picture on to you? Put the mind she's got it. Why, why, why would Zoe do this? She's your best friend. She's your best friend, okay. She maybe wants to get a rise out of you because then she can like. Screenshot that and be like, oh, she made fun of this person. Okay, so you might rise at you, but she might want to have power over the person as well. Go. Mm -hmm. Why is she using a language like slut? Well, why is she using that language? Slut, sly, whatever you want to call it. Why would, why would that be getting used, you think? She cheated on her boyfriend. Cheated on her boyfriend, so there's a bit of a blame on, the blame on her. That's fair enough, good point. Yeah, good point. Well, why else would we maybe call, call this girl a slut or slag or whatever? What else would be the purpose behind that? Why do you think some girls would call other girls sluts and slags? Go for it. I don't, I, I don't. Right, okay. Girls, what do you think? Why would, and like be honest. The way she's dressing, maybe. The way she's dressing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's easy to, to say these things. Okay. What's the picture of? Okay. Right, grab a seat and we'll explore this a bit further. <laughs> it's just a naked picture. <laughs> right, grab, grab a seat. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you a, a clip of a film. And it's the first, the first two minutes of a film. And we're going to use that as a basis to ask some questions. For the, for the... Some of you may have seen the film, but if not, don't worry. It's a couple of minutes. Chain of thought, it says, I can't believe he has those photos. Why, why would Scott and some other boys in this world think it's okay 
to ask for these types of pictures? Why would they want these pictures on their phones? Why would that be the case? Why would, why would a boy want a picture like this on their phone? Some of you have been to the, the Halloween costume thing and start to relate it to that. If you haven't, if you haven't been to that, you'll, you'll hopefully come out in discussion. But think about where is Scott, another boys, another some boy. Okay, here's the question. Why do I use the phrase some boys? Why do I say some boys and some men? Not all men do this. Not, most, most boys don't do this. So, so I'm really very clear on that one. So why would some boys think this is okay to have a picture like this on their phone? Where, where do they get the messages from? Some people think that like, like, that's what they're supposed to get from girls. Like, that's what girls are supposed to do. Yeah. Is that guys look at them. And where are boys learning this message from? Where's, where's it coming from? From media? What type of media? What type of media are we, are we as guys learning what it is to be real men? Now, let's be honest, guys in the room, I'm a guy, we're guys, we, we, we breathe the same air, the same oxygen that's going about the world. What is, what, is, what is society telling us about what it is to be a man? Let's be honest, let's have honest conversations here. What is it saying to us? When I was a young boy, it was telling me to be strong and tough. It was telling me that I had to be, I had to have lots of women. I had to have girls. That's what, that's what society was telling me. What else is society telling us, guys? What is it saying to us? Talk. What are, you, what are you thinking? Um, what's, it, what's, what's, that, what's, what's these types of films saying? You, you made the point as well about having, you know, having to have girls. Having power. Sorry? Power. power. Men have to have power. So power over who? Over females. Is that something we see in society? Do men hold power over females? Absolutely. Absolutely. And we've seen a lot in the last few days about, about that on our televisions. What does, what does society tell girls about how they need to behave? What does it say to you? What, 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 what's society saying? And maybe it's not how you feel, but what is it saying to, 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 to your gender about how you need to, need to behave? What is it telling you? You have to be attractive. You have to be attractive? I used the example this morning of my girls, Jennifer and Alice, getting up an hour early to get ready for school, to get their hair done, their makeup done. And I used to say, well, you just hurry up and get to school. And I feel really bad now because I, didn't, I totally ignored the pressures that they were under. I didn't see it then. I see it now. So the reality is for young women is you need to look good all the time. You need to do certain things all of the time. Us guys need to get this, we need to get that. So do you think Scott could be getting influenced by, by society? Yeah, question as well. But she did send them, so why would she? So one reason why... The girl would send a picture as maybe the influence of society, but why else do you think this girl has sent pictures to Scott? Feel validated and pretty. Feel, to feel validated by who? By Scott? But yeah, by Scott. By Scott, okay. Why else would a, would a girl send pictures to a boyfriend? A naked picture or a topless picture? Why else would it happen? Number of reasons, yeah? To feel validated? Why else? Hard conversations, I know, but these are conversations that we need to be having. Because what's happening in schools a lot just now is we go in and we say, we say to kids, don't do these things. Prohibition will never work. The questions we're asking just now are the questions that young people want to start, you know, we're finding they actually want to, to have a discussion. Do you think some girls are getting forced to take pictures? You, you think so? Mm -hmm. but do, you think, do you think girls are feeling pressurised by boyfriends to take pictures? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we know in Scotland... Um, upwards of 40 to 50% of sexting cases involve coercion. They involve an element of force. If you don't take the picture and send it to me, I'm going to spread this around the school. Or it might be a simple case, take the picture, take the picture, please take the picture, going to take the picture. And before you know it, you're feeling right. You know what? Just take it. What did, what did, what did Zoe call the girl in the, in the text message? What was the lovely phrase she used? Is that a word you would use in America? Slut, slag. and more. And we've talked about why that might be the case, because of how she's dressed, etc. Do you think it's fair to call somebody a slut or a slag or worse if they've been forced to take that picture? Is that fair? It's not, is it? Conversations you can have with the young kids in your schools can start to unpick the use of language. It's not fair that she gets called that, especially if she's been forced to take it. 
So you, you can find out there'll be data and data in America around sexting to let you know exactly how many cases involve force and coercion. Get that out, get that into the conversation. What else does it say there? Um, how would she feel if she knew? What's the impact on the girl? What was that, sorry? She doesn't know, she doesn't know what's happening, but okay, she, she finds out it's happening. What's the potential impact on her? She'd be devastated. Devastated? Yeah, because everybody's seen her body. Okay. It wasn't just for her boyfriend. For the boyfriend? Because whatever she's in love with, whatever yeah. she gets that with him, and now everybody's seen this, it is meant to be that way. Okay. How, 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 would, you know, how, how would you feel as, as girls if, if this happened to you? How, how would you feel? Really Sometimes, shameful. sorry? Really shameful. Really shameful? And what, what could be the outcome of this for, for a young girl? Yeah. Embarrassment? What else? Sorry? Depression? Depression? Could lead to what? Suicide. Suicide. And we, we can't ignore that. Have you seen the film Audrey and Daisy? Have you seen, who's seen, seen the film Audrey and Daisy? It's a film on Netflix just now. Uh, Audrey and Daisy, it's called. It's about this. One of the one of the one of the girls killed herself. One didn't, and it's about the two the two how the two stories intersected, and then one went that way, and one went another way. Well worth watching, really worth watching about it. So, are these short term impacts, or okay, suicide is long term, but is it short term? Is it long term? Because it lasts a lifetime. Sorry, it varies, but it could last. It could last for years. We're seeing good evidence now that the impact of bullying in high school lasts through adulthood. So this stuff is not just something that takes place and is, is dealt with in a, in a week or two weeks. It could, it could destroy a person. And see, when you do MVP sessions, the phrase I love using with young people is, put yourself in another person's shoes. How would it feel? How would it feel to be called names? How would it feel to be in this situation? Okay, thank, thanks for that. What else? Can we get in trouble for this? Could, could you get in trouble for this? Who with? Yeah, go for it. There's a lawsuit going on in Knoxville right now. Some of those signed pictures to another kid. Uh-huh. And now I can't remember. I think it's a girl that's getting sued for sexual harassment. So the girl's getting sued for sending the pictures? Yeah. Okay, so that, that, that is a potential outcome. What about a criminal consequence? Is this a crime? Is it? What's your knowledge of the crime on this area? Child pornography? Is that a nice thing to be called a sex offender in America? Not at all. And this is a potential sexual crime. I think, I think in the States it's the same as the UK. If we have a picture of a person under the age of 18, that's when it becomes the sex offence and, 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 and the criminal case can take place. As a law enforcement officer, do you think that I want to criminalise young people at 14, 15 for committing these crimes? Why, why would that be? I don't want that. You know, we're all young, and we are young in the head, I'm still young, still a young person. Is it perfectly normal for, for people to explore their sexuality, their sex, and their gender? Is, it, is, it, is, it, is that a normal thing that we all do? Of course it is. So what's happening in society is young people are exploring their sexuality, they're exploring their sex, they're exploring their gender. And the, if the messages they're getting, a bit like what was said in that film, if they're getting messages from things like mainstream pornography, from media, from, adver from advertisements. You know, ad adverts don't just sell products, they define relationships. And, a lot, and lots of the adverts that we see in telly often place men up here and women down here. And pornography is a classic example of that. Men win, women lose. So that, these conversations start to explain why this is happening, why, why we're seeing an increase of this in society. Because you're living in a very sexualized environment and we need to help you, and you need to help young people navigate this stuff because it's destroying young people and it's destroying relationships. Has anybody been here, have you done the types of abuse activity? Who, who, did, who did the types of abuse and respect? Who's the, you said you did that. The types of violence, did you do that one? Who's the, anybody done that one with Glenn Keith? No? Yeah. Did you do the respect stuff as well? And that, so that's what we need to be doing, talking a lot about respectful relationships so young people can actually see a respectful relationship. Because one way we can stop this is if people know that if a boyfriend's asking you to send pictures or a girlfriend's asking you to send pictures, that's not healthy. Especially if they're forcing you to do it. It's not a healthy part of the relationship. So that's, so that's where we are. Here's one for you. If a friend is being abused, I don't want you to, to, to move for this, just tell me. 
if a friend is being abused or is being abusive, it is none of my business. What's your thoughts? How do you feel about that? Yeah? Do you agree with that or do you disagree with that? I disagree. Okay. Who else disagrees with that, that statement? What? That's what we want to see. What do friends do for each other? What, 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 what does a good friend do to another good friend? Text them. What are you thinking? So you make, make a person accountable. Good point. Is that easy? It can be difficult. It takes courage to do that, yeah? Good. What else do good friends do for each other? Help each other out. They're there for each other. Friendships. What, what's the purpose of friendships? Look out for each other. What are you thinking? Good friend does what? Want the best for them. And that's why I said this morning, MVP is about friendships. We need to build friendships to deal with all this nonsense that we're seeing in the world. Get good friendships, we can deal with this stuff here. Is it easier to support a friend or challenge a friend? Support. support. Let's look at that just now for a couple of minutes. I want you to imagine that the weight of the world is on your shoulders. Right? You're having a horrifically bad day. Something happened in your life and you're having a very, very bad day. How would it feel if somebody came up to you and said... Are you okay? How would, how would that make you feel? To feel... You'd, sorry? You feel a bit safe? What yourself? People care about you? Yeah. Victims of abuse and violence often say they just want a person to come up to them and say, are you okay? That's all they want. You shouldn't have to put up with that. You validate the experience, you acknowledge what's happening to them, and you validate the experience. What else could you say to a victim of abuse that would make them feel really good? What do you think? Do victims blame themselves for a lot of these things? Would, would a girl maybe blame herself for this, for this incident? Yeah? So what would be nice to say to a girl, or a boy, if that's the case, what would, what, would, what would be nice to say to them that would make them feel a bit better about themselves? It's not their fault. See, any time you, for a, even if, if it's for a second or two seconds, you start saying, why did she send the picture? Or why doesn't she just leave the boyfriend? Or why did she get into that car with that stranger? Stop yourself from thinking that. Because we live in a society where victims blame themselves and we just compound that by blaming them. For saying something like slut, slag, what was she thinking? All we're doing there is blaming victims of abuse. Okay, so really, really think about it. How could you, why is it important, do you think, to challenge a friend? around these types of behaviours. Why, why is it important? Why would it be important for you to challenge a friend? What are you thinking? What are you thinking? Sometimes your friends are always right. Got to navigate them through different parts of, the, parts of life, yeah, definitely. You want to stop your friend getting into trouble? Definitely. It's a hard thing. And that's, what, that's what I like about MVP. It's leadership. And you know what? Being a leader sometimes means doing, doing tough stuff. There's no, no doubt about it. But if my friend's potentially going down road A, which is straight to potential jail or getting called a sex offender, I need to get them back. And I need to challenge them. I need to say, you be, be careful. That's not right. That's not what I believe in. That's a powerful thing for a young guy. And this is where I think MVP has been really good at engaging young men. Is if you go up to, one of the, this is for the guys in the room. If you go up to another man and say, that, um, that's not right, are you, everything okay with you? But I don't, I don't believe in that. Does that send a powerful message out to a guy? If another man challenges another man, it does. And we need more of that from men, from men in this world. We need more le male leadership when it comes to tackling sexual violence, domestic abuse, and things like this. Because far too often, this behavior has been written off as locker room banter. That, that, that's what it's described as. Right? But we need to stand up to it and deal with it. That's what we need to be doing. Okay, so what can we do? As, a, as bystanders, let me finish. Right, first one there. This, is, this isn't the delete that you talked about. This is a delete the picture, stay out of it, it's none of my business. Is that a good, good option? Just delete it and walk away from it? What, what, why, is, why is this not a good, good option? Okay, so you're just walking past it. The standard you walk past is the standard you accept. 
you know, I would actually go far to say that you're complicit in the problem if you walk away from it. Right? And that's something, we have a phrase in Scotland called silence is violence. That notion where you see something and you walk away from it, you're actually contributing towards the abuse, the bullying, the sexting, the whatever's taking place, you're part of the problem. And that's, that's, that's a big thing to think about. What's the consequence of doing nothing? What, what does doing nothing say to the, the girl in this, in this scenario? What does it say to her? What, 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 does, what does do nothing say to the girl in the picture? You don't care. You're on your own here. I don't care about you. What does it say to the guy? What does it say to the guy who's taking the picture? And Scott, what does it say to Scott if we do nothing about it? It's fine. It's okay. And we know that, not all cases, we know that a lot of sexual violence doesn't just happen. This doesn't just happen here. There's lots of things at this end of the, of the, of the road that leads up to it. So we know that some people who are involved in the, in the sexual violence, sexual assault, rape, often at this end, it's been the sexting, it's been inappropriate language, it's been the jokes, it's been the language, it's been the touching. And before you know it, you have rape and sexual assault. Not always, but think about where bystanders could intervene at different stages of that journey. We have bystanders in Scotland who use the term MVP as a distraction. So someone says something inappropriate in the classroom and someone will shout MVP out and everybody knows there's something wrong happening and it kills the situation. It disrupts it and distracts it. So simple, simple techniques can, can make a big, big, big difference. Tell my friend to stop. Try to convince him that it's wrong and might be even against the law. We know it's against the law. We agree. We agree that it's, a cha it's difficult to challenge a friend. How could we make it safer to go? How, you know, how, how could you make it safer to go up to your friend, you? How could I make it safer for you to go up to the friend over here to tell him it's wrong? How, how could it make it easier for you? What, what could you do? Like, 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 get him by himself. Okay. Like but he's quite aggressive. He's a big guy. He's, he's a real tough guy. He's going to... What else could you do? Bring a friend. Bring a friend in. <laughs> well done. Yeah. So you bring a friend. Because you all know that. You, you all know there's a problem here. Is it easier to deal with situations in, in big numbers, and groups, safety numbers? Yeah. Like-minded people. Speak to your friends. What can we do here? So that, that's what we should be thinking about. Tell my friend's ex that he's been sharing this picture. We've talked about that. We've agreed that it would feel really good if somebody came up to you and said, are you okay? So we know that the power. But again, if you didn't feel confident doing that on your own, friends, get some friends involved. And we talk about that, identify another friend, friends who might agree with me, and together figure out what to do. And that's why it's important. See, when you do your sessions with young people, do the hands up as often as you possibly can. Because then you can say something like, now, 10 minutes ago, you all put your hands up to say there's a problem here, right? How can you help this guy out? What can you do? Keep referring back to the, 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 the collective will of the group that they see, a, they see a problem, they know there's a problem, they have a responsibility to do something. Ask my parents, teacher, coach, or other adult I trust and get advice on what to do. Good option. Speak to a teacher, speak to a parent, coach. Is that, is that, is that a good option? Are young people going to choose that? Would you choose that option? Do you think? Would you choose that option? What, what might stop some people choosing that option? I mean, no, it does. There's a, there's a reason why a lot of young people wouldn't choose this option. Because they don't have a good relationship with, like, adults. So, so they've, not, they've not got that close relationship with the parent, carer, or whoever. What else? They don't want to ruin a relationship with a friend. So what's relating to that, what do we often call people who go and tell a teacher or tell a coach or tell a parent? What's the word? A snitch. Snitch. What other words do you use? Tattletale. Tattletale. Anything else? We, we, we use the word grass in Scotland. The grassing. Snitching. But the, but the definition of a grass, if you look at the English dictionary, is a criminal who informs, no, an associate who informs on a criminal. That's, the, that, that, that's what a, a grass or a snitch is. Young people, you guys, are neither criminals or associates of criminals. So here's a question for you. If your friend's in trouble and an option is to go and speak to a teacher, are you being a good friend or are you being a snitch? What's your thoughts? If you're in trouble, then you're being a good friend because you're helping them. And that's the simple conversation they need to be having. Because that is a barrier to, them, to people coming and speak to a teacher. Are you, you guys teachers? So it's a barrier. They're scared to come to, to you because they might be called a grass, snitch, tattletale, being called out. So you can break down that word in these classes.
because it's poisoning relationships in schools, it's stopping things from being interrupted and intervened, it's stopping people intervening. If, you're, if your friend's in trouble, or is the trouble, are you being a good friend or being a snitch? You're being a good friend. Let's not, let's not, let's not forget that. Um, here's, here, here, I'm going to show you a picture of a girl who I think has found the best way to deal with being asked by her boyfriend to send a picture of herself in her bra. I quite like, quite like that one. So Marcus is the boyfriend, obviously the ex-boyfriend. Um, asked Denise, says, send me a pic of you in a bra. Denise, okay. So Denise is obviously getting a bit t tired and fed up. So she's got a lovely bra out of the drawer. Picture, take it and put it in the bra and send it back to Marcus. And Marcus is going, WTF, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> right? And then Denise, I think, what, what, would, what would Denise's next line be, do you think? What, what would Denise's next line be under, under the bra picture? What's, what, 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 would, what would you say to a boyfriend who asks you for pictures of you in a bra? What, what would you say to him? You would say no, but if he keeps asking, what would you say? You're dumped. You're, 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 see ya. Because so, so that, that's what we were thinking about. But that, that's a very creative way of dealing with a situation. Okay? So just, 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 just thinking about it. So really just, uh, what time have we got now? I'm nearly finished. Just to, just to sum up, sexting is an issue on my side of the Atlantic Ocean. It's the side here in the United States. It's stopping young people from being the people they really want to be. A lot of young girls and a lot of young boys are being forced into sending these pictures. It's not fair when we start to use language like slut, slag, or whatever we call people for, for, for these types of pictures because we know a lot of them are being forced into sending them. As a team, as a community, you all have a responsibility, not only to the girl, the boy, but to yourself to stay safe when you do these situations. You have options. You have a space to do something. Right? And I think we all have a responsibility as leaders in our school to take that stance and do something about it. Okay? So that, that is, that's how we would run a, an MVP scenario back in Scotland. I think that's the type of thing that you'll be doing when you go out into... Who's done who's peer-to-peer? Done -peer? Who's done classes of the young people. So does some of that look familiar? Some of the structure that we're talking, that's good. So that, that's good how it's been done. But this is a, this is a subject that I'd be, I'd be, if you delivered this subject before in classes, anybody here done a sexting class? Not yet? Yeah, get, use it, because it's, it's impacting on young people. Big, big style. So thanks very much for your time. Any, qu any questions? Great, have a good day. See you back up there. Thank you. Thank you.